Hello, YouTubers. This is a fun one. So what I have here is a roll of Prusament PETG Magnetite. It's infused with 40% magnetite. What's magnetite? Well, its chemical symbol is uh, Fe3O4, meaning three atoms of iron and four atoms of oxygen. So it's an iron oxide. It occurs naturally in volcanic areas with lots of volcanic rock. Sometimes it looks like black sand at the bottom of a stream or a rivulet. Um, it is a fairly stable form of iron oxide. You can harvest it with a magnet, just dragging it over the sand, because it'll stick to magnets. In fact, this filament, if I take this little permanent magnet here, it sticks. <laughs> you can hear it just click on there. A little neodymium magnet. The filament itself can't really be magnetized at home. If you had a really, really strong magnetic electromagnetic field, you might be able to, but magnets will stick to it. But I started looking at the properties of magnetite because, you know, being an amateur radio operator, I want to know if I, maybe I can print parabolic reflectors with this thing. Will, will it reflect RF? But while I was researching the properties of magnetite, I discovered that the nuclear industry uses it as radiation shielding. They combine it into concrete to make the concrete better at blocking radiation. Well, that got me thinking. Can you 3D print radiation shields? So that's what this is about. That's the experiment I did. So to test this, I'm going to need a couple of things. First off, I'm going to need a Geiger counter. Well, I have this little GQ GMC uh, 320 plus. Not the best Geiger counter. It only reads and counts per minutes, but it'll work. Uh, then I need a radiation source. Well, I have a radiation source. I have this bright orange plate. Now, you might be thinking Fiesta Ware, if you're aware of this, but this actually is not Fiesta Ware. It's branded something different that I can't quite make out, but it's not Fiesta Ware. However, it's from the same era, and it uses the same process. They used depleted uranium uh, to give these plates and these, these uh, dinnerware um, this vibrant orange color. And since it's using depleted uranium, it is radioactive. Let me bring the Geiger counter up here and I'll show you. This is, this is fun. Here's the plate. So that's going to be my test setup. I've got the Geiger counter, I've got the plate. Uh, I installed the uh, software over here on the laptop that reads information directly from the Geiger counter. And then uh, this is how I set the tests up. Now for each of these tests, I have printed these shields. The Geiger Mueller tube is right along the bottom of the unit here on the inside. And so the shield will fit over the bottom of the unit like so completely shielding the tube. The thickness of the walls and the floor is on the side here, two millimeters. So this is two millimeters of the PET-G magnetite completely isolating the uh, tube. And that'll give us our uh, measurement. Now, this is going to raise the bottom up two, mil two millimeters off the plate. So to make sure that we're not just reading fall off uh, over distance, I've also printed a couple of two millimeter shims and I'll take another reading with those propping the corners up so the counter will be just over the plate without a shield, but it'll be raised up two millimeters off the plate. So we'll get a comparative reading to look at to make sure we're not you know, reading fall off. And then we'll make, make measurements with the shields. So I've got a two millimeter uh, shield. I have a three millimeter shield. And I have a four millimeter shield. Now these are all magnetite. Um, to compare against other material, I also have a PETG carbon fiber composite. This is not magnetite, and we'll use this as well to, to sort of gauge how much shielding we're getting from the PETG plastic. I don't have a plain PETG. This does have carbon fiber in it, so that might skew it, but we'll get a comparative reading with that. And then two millimeter thick plain old PLA. So we will take all of those readings and then we should be able to get an idea 
of how effective the magnetite is at filtering or, or shielding the radiation. Okay, this is going to be my testing methodology. I have the Geiger counter hooked up to the computer via USB. I have Geiger log set up. What I'm going to do, I've drawn a rectangle on the plate, so I will always be placing the counter in exactly the same position on the plate. I'll set it on the plate. And it takes it a little while to uh, reach an average, so I will wait for it to settle down. And as soon as it stops rising, I will start the log running over on the computer. Okay, so now it has stopped climbing. I'm going to switch over to the computer. Okay, I just cleared the log file. I'm going to start the quick log, which will start pulling data from the counter. And then over here, I'll check the average trace. Yeah. So now it's plotting an average line here, and it's giving us an average number down here. Right now, 4,280. I'm going to let it run for at least 200 samples or five minutes, and then I will take the average, and that will be our measurement for this pass. So we're going to measure it directly on the plate to find out exactly what our maximum is without any shielding. Okay, I just finished my first pass with the counter directly on the plate. We took 300 samples over the course of about six minutes. The average count per minute is 4242, 4242, and that is with the counter directly on the plate, so that's our baseline. I'm going to screenshot this, label it, and then we'll move on to the next sample. This is with no shield, just two millimeter spacers, raising the counter two millimeters off the plate. This is PLA, two millimeters thick. This is the PETG magnetite filament, two millimeters. This is the PETG magnetite, three millimeters. And finally, this is the PETG 40% magnetite at four millimeters thick, four millimeters. Getting an ambient reading. The plate is in the other room. So those were the tests that I did. I tried to be as uh, consistent as possible. Every single pass was exactly uh, 300 samples over the course of about six minutes. Let's look at the results, though. So here are the results. Um, the very top entry there in uh, line three is the ambient radiation with no radiation source near the counter. So about 24.62 counts on average, which is about right. Uh, for this area here in the high desert. Now, uh, the no shield, where I just had the Geiger counter sitting directly on the plate, we averaged out to 4,242 counts. Uh, but since the shields at the minimum were two millimeters thick at the bottom, uh, I did another measurement with a two millimeter gap, um, just to be fair there. And uh, just a very slight difference from the distance of 4,222 or 42, was our reading with just the two millimeter gap. So a very, very slight fall off over two millimeters. That's good. Uh, and then the control samples. Um, and actually PLA by itself cut the count down quite a bit there. You can see 1,386 uh, average with just PLA. So plastic by itself shields some of the gamma. I think it's gamma radiation that comes from the depleted uranium on the plate. Uh, PET-G, the only other PET-G filament that I had was uh, carbon fiber infused, 
but it was only slightly more effective than the PLA at 1,334. Now the magnetite, big difference. Look at that, two millimeter magnetite, 725.3. That's about 47% better than PLA, I think. Let me see, I, yeah, 47.7% more effective than the PLA, uh, and 82.8% uh, more effective than the two millimeter gap with no shield. So the magnetite infused um, PET G is blocking 82.8% of the radiation uh, coming off the plate. That's pretty effective. And then I had a three millimeter and a four millimeter, and you can see it's a, a, a little better than uh, half um, a reduction in each case, adding a millimeter. Where we got to four millimeters, we were down to 180.8 counts. So, yeah, it's actually pretty effective at blocking radiation. How about that? Uh, what's the use case? I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps some scientists out there that uh, work in a lab might have a use for being able to 3D print quickly an odd shape that has radiation shielding properties. Who knows? It's certainly an interesting filament. I'll put a link to Prusa's um, site where you can um, order some of this magnetite-infused filament if you want to play with it yourself. Uh, I'm going to go on and do some more experiments with it. Uh, I'm going to do some RF experiments with it now since I'm a ham. Uh, can, can this be used to print reflectors? Um, one person on the Facebook page suggested maybe you could use it to 3D print uh, uh, tuning slugs for inductors. Uh, that's an idea. It made me think maybe it could be uh, used in a different type of variable capacitor, you know, where you have a plate of this stuff that inserts between a couple of other plates. Will that affect the capacitance there? Could you 3D print um, fine-tuning into a, an antenna tuner with this stuff? You know, there's all kinds of experiments I'm going to do with it. This, this is going to be a fun filament. So I hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.